Participles in Latin, Part 1. There are three kinds of participles in Latin. The present active participle, the perfect passive participle, and the future active participle. The future active participle is extremely uncommon and will not be covered. Participles in Latin, Part 1, will focus on the present active participle. Participles in Latin, Part 2, will look at the perfect passive participle. Participles in Latin, Part 3, will look at some additional issues when translating participles in complete sentences. Present active participles. What does a present active participle look like in English? Noun, verbing. What does a present active participle look like in Latin? The present active participle in Latin will end in the letters ns or nt followed by a third declension ending. The present active participle is easily identifiable by those letters nt, and it can help to remember that the nt is also in present. Okay, the present active participle, or PAP, has the letters NS or NT, that's how you'll identify it, and it's followed by the third declension endings. Followed by the third declension endings, what would that look like? Remember, participles are verbs acting like adjectives. In their role as adjectives, they need to have adjective endings. That means they need to have case, nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, ablative, number, singular, plural, and gender, male, female, and neuter. All right, so these present active participles take the third declension endings. In the male and female, those endings are blank, I-S-I, E-M-E, ace, um, ibus, ace, ibus. When these endings are added on to make the present active participle endings, notice that the blank is replaced by the letters ns. Everywhere else, the ending is nt followed by the third declension ending. In tis, in t, in tem, in te, in tes, in tium, in tibus, in tes, in tibus. You might have noticed that those weren't exactly the third declension noun endings. There's an extra I thrown in in the genitive plural, just like you see in the third declension adjective endings, in tium. Because a participle needs to act like an adjective, it can't only have male and female endings. The neuter endings are the third declension neuter, blank, I-S-I, -I, blank, E, A, um, ibus, A, ibus. When we use these endings to form the present active participle endings, we end up with ns, in tis, in t, ns, in te, in tia, in tium, in tibus, in tia, in tibus. Notice this time there are three extra i's in the nominative plural, the genitive plural, and the accusative plural. Also note that both blanks, the blank in the nominative singular and the accusative singular, are replaced with ns. Okay, let's see what these endings look like when we use them to form an actual present active participle. Let's say we use the verb love, amo, amare. The root of amo is am, am. Amo, amare is a first conjugation verb. Therefore, the glue is a, and we have ama. If we add the masculine and feminine participle endings, we end up with amans, amantis, amanti, amantem, amante, amantes, amantium, amantibus, amantes, amantibus. Let's look at another verb. Say we take the verb capio, capre, which is a third conjugation io. The root is cop. The glue is ie. This time, let's add the neuter participle endings. We would have capiens, capientes, capienti, capiens, capiente, capientia, capientium, capientibus, capientia, capientibus. 
Now that we know what a present active participle looks like and how it's formed, we need to know how to deal with it in a sentence. Let's say we had the sentence rex lupos videt, the king sees the wolves. What kind of wolves does the king see? He could see scary wolves or gray wolves, but in our sentence rex lupos fugientes videt. Fugientes has an ES ending. That means it's either nominative plural or accusative plural. I have an accusative plural noun in lupos, and therefore I know that fugientes modifies lupos. Rex lupos fugientes videt. The king sees the wolves fleeing. Here's another example. Femina forum capet. The woman captured the thief. Which woman captured the thief? Femina corens forum capet. Remember, the ns on corens is the equivalent of the blank in our third declension endings. Therefore, it is most likely nominative singular. Femina is also nominative singular. Therefore, I know corens modifies femina. Femina corens forum capet. The woman running captured the thief. One more example. Dux cum hostibus pugnabat. The leader was fighting with the enemy. This time, let's add the participle venientibus. Dux cum hostibus venientibus pugnabat. Venientibus and hostibus agree in case, number, and gender. Therefore, I know venientibus is modifying hostibus. Dux cum hostibus venientibus pugnabat. The leader was fighting with the enemy coming. That is an overview of present active participles. Participles in Latin part two will look at the perfect passive participle.